So that's second bunker in a second bunker in one day. On the road of remembrance in Folkestone, where millions of soldiers marched to the beach to be taken to the Western Front in the First World War, there exists a bunker built to serve in another world war those soldiers thought would never happen again. It's a small bunker, with only about four to five rooms. However, it is believed to have played a very important part in the war effort. This bunker is also known for its unique, non-standard construction, with its brutalist blockhouse easily visible along the road. At the time, this bunker's design deceived me into believing this place was built pre-Second World War. However, after some research, there is known documentation from 1942 detailing the construction of a small telephone exchange with additional operations rooms to be built on the Road of Remembrance. The bunker was completed in just three months. Today, the bunker lies unused, but not forgotten. Being situated on the Road of Remembrance, a road that saw millions upon millions of soldiers marching down it to the Western Front. There were attempts made to turn the bunker into a heritage center. However, ownership complications stopped all that, leaving the bunker as it is today. More about this bunker's purpose will be explained later on in the video. Oh my god, come here and look at this. I don't like this shit. Come here, right, look at this, look up there. Look how many big spiders there are. Fuck yeah. Look, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, they're nine, not, ten. They're not moving. Eleven, so avoid them. Twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Oh my god, man, it just goes on and on. Avoid them then. Oh, please, Lewis, I really don't like spiders. Ugh. Saying they're icky. They don't hurt you, but oh, I hate yes. you being above your head as well. Piss off. Oh my god. Dear. Oh my god. Yeah, oh, they, they were definitely going to be weird. Look at this. These are toilets. Yeah. Nice. Fucking hell. All the shit, man. These are toilets. They're literally all over. What were toilets? Damn, yeah. Goodbye. Someone's had to dig their way out. Well, look, I believe what that was, right, mate. Actually, no, someone has tried to dig that. Yeah. The fuck? Little prison escape. God knows where they're trying to go with that. Yeah. Mm. Mate, if I see a massive spider that starts running after me, I'm bouncing straight away. Air bombs still here, it's coming apart. Oh, the air's a bit shit, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. I haven't given you much detail on this, but this actually was a pre-World War II naval communications bunker. Uh, quite small, very old design, definitely not a design similar to any of the World War II bunkers we've seen. Basically, it was a sort of listening station to pick up signals that would then be decoded in Bletchley Park, further on in the country. To further explain, this bunker would have received, monitored and intercepted communications and information coming in from coastal shipping traffic, relaying it to Bletchley Park for decoding and analysis. The bunker likely would have housed radio equipment, telephone exchanges and also typewriting systems for physically recording intercepted communications. It is believed that this bunker may have been one of Bletchley Park's Y stations, and may have played a small part in intercepting Enigma code. It's a real shame because this place has been actually vandalised. This place is actually vandalised. Like, this place is yeah. trashed. Yeah, a lot of concrete vaulted rooms. The actual structure itself is not in a bad condition, but everything has been torn apart. Yeah. We've still got, still got door frames, air corners are still here in some areas. Mm. What they would have done is that they would have dug this out. They would have dug this out, and then over time, they would have stopped, bricked it off, because they didn't have to go any further, and obviously people have chipped away at the bricks. There's some intact stuff in this room at the very least. Door frames intact, aircon is intact. Alicia is a <laughs> yeah. A lot of corrosion that's happened over time. It's just not in the best condition anymore. Hmm. Well, oh god, the echo in here. Aircon, and it comes out when it ends latched to the ceiling. Like that. 
It's nice to see. Oh God, has it rusted away. Guys, come in here. Listen to the reverb in this room. Hello. Oh, God. The reverb in this room, it's, it's very close to the fuel bunker, this room. Oh, there you go. Wow. Maybe we'll find one at some point. <laughs> Not yet. Oh, wow. Oh, no. Oh, wow. Oh, no. Oh, no. No, I didn't mean that. Oh, 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 I'm sorry, yeah. yeah. We've got a stairway here. Real shame. Just... We've got this room here, which leads back to where we came. Oh, oh yeah, fair enough. Look, fuck off! We'll head up here just to check. Piss me off. You look right in your fucking face. Dude, it's in my house. Okay, guys, this looks like another entrance. It is. Up there to your right. Oh, yeah, this look. Is the main yeah, this is uh, the outside clock. Oh my god, there's an actual toilet. I don't even want to look at it. Uh, very old. This looks like it was some kind of decontamination block. As standard for a Second World War bunker, there are systems in place to warn about and protect from gas attacks. This bunker was constructed by a civilian company and not the Royal Engineers, hence its non standard design. The civilian company's solution for incorporating gas protection measures into the bunker was its somewhat iconic outside blockhouse, standing out prominently along the road. The design essentially placed two large air filtering drums on a floor above the bunker level. Access to the drums was gained through a second door above the bunkers, as you can see here in the photo. We believe what we saw on the bunker level was a decontamination block, to decontaminate people who enter the bunker in the event of a gas attack. I'm just thinking to myself, if you look at the design of this room and then compare it to the others, you can blatantly tell it's of a different design. Yeah. Well, let's get out of here. This place is disgusting. I can't wait to get out of here. Let's get the fuck out. It's all sand, it's all fucking sandy. Yeah, someone's been, like, someone's been gotten bored and started digging it out. It's all fucking sandy. Oh. Come on, mate. That torch is fucking ridiculous. Well, that's a quick one to end our day. Uh, not the nicest place, to be honest. It's fucking depressing. It really is. You know what the sad thing is? This place could have actually ended up a heritage site. Yeah, but I'm saying. Yeah, ownership. There's ownership problems with it. Oh, wow. So it's just falling apart. Honestly, mate, why the hell would you want to hang on to something like this and not give it away to a heritage like foundation who can actually make it look nice and not fucked like this? And keep the fucking druggies out. That's my rant over. <laughs> but yeah, uh, little place. It's good to see it. Gets it out of the way. And a very interesting design, let's say that much. But apart from that, that's it. That's two bunkers in one day we've done. And you probably would have seen the previous one. Uh, on my channel not that long ago. So, Let's get the fuck out of there. Yeah, glad you could be here through this. Because I fucking well ain't.